Welcome back to the recorded case notes of a saw palm gone wild in suburban Florida. This is Donald August versus the Land of Flowers, a fiction podcast about a 12-year-old boy and his reluctant summer nanny. This entire show was completely independently created. So if you're enjoying listening to our baby, we would love your help getting the word out. Please consider giving us a five-star rating on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. Okay, now, on with the show. Episode 3, Plotting Under the Couch. The case was tough. Two days ago, a plant was just another inch high bottom feeder, trying to suck up the sunlight so he could escape the concrete crack he was born in. Then he picked up a few inches, got a bit of a following, got my attention. But that's no big deal. One more tough guy in the world of tough guys. Everyone was getting a few inches taller in those days. Kids from school, shooting up like skyscrapers. They wanted to take over. And then yesterday, I picked up a book, and the plant picked up an extra foot. This morning, when Mom walked me over to Uncle Rowan's broke-down joint, it was as tall as me. This case was bigger than me. Well, not yet, but probably will be by next time I stand next to it and measure. My season finale perp was plotting something. Something bigger than could fit in this plot. And it had to do with these suspects. Seeds, my assistant said. Plant seeds. But if the suspects in my pockets were just seeds, what were they doing sprouting legs? Tough morning at the office, huh, Donald August? Uncle Rowan! It's nothing. What? Just some pocket lint. Kid stuff. Nothing to see. I know I'm cooking you lunch, but I thought we were doing our detective bartender thing. No, we are. That was good, Uncle Rowan. Say it again. All right. Are you ready? Yes. Wait. Do on the case? What? Tough morning on the case. Ah, all right, all right. Tough morning on the case, eh, Donald August? Is it that obvious? You've been at my bar ten minutes. It's barely noon. You're already asking for your second Capri Sun. Private investigator has to stay loose. Make connections that other people miss. What's a Capri Sun or two to loosen up a P.I.'s brain? Two before lunch. You'll be flopping around looser than these hot dogs. (sighs) Here's our cover. The first pouch is still full. No one else has to know what's full of air. <laughs> That's all you hot shot detectives are. Hot air. Really, Donald, your mother said no more Capri Sun lunches. The sugar winds you up all afternoon. Come on, Uncle Rowan. We can't play our usual place bartender game if you don't serve me another round on the house. <sighs> okay, boss. Since you're such a regular, I cooked up something special for you. Special glass and all. Here. White Russian. Hold the Russian. Ah, the hard stuff. Today calls for it. Wait, this is almond milk, right? Because Mom thinks I'm lactose intolerant. Lactaid. Tastes like normal milk, but no lactose. I got it special for you. Cool. I like the cold observer glass. Thank you, Donald. I wasn't going to have a martini before five, so I thought you might as well use the glass. You know, Alex is picking you up after we eat. Yes, Uncle Rowan. She reminded me of myself. When your mother texted her to ask if she wanted the morning off, she accepted. As fast as a perp flee in the scene. When I was a teenager, uh, I was up late every summer night with my friends, sleeping in until the afternoon. Lex probably got up early to swipe. Swipe? Is that... Yeah, she swipes all day. Don't you have to be, uh, 18 to swipe? The Cold Observer TV show is rated M.A., but I still watch it. Well, can Miss Alexa <clears throat> handle herself around the mystery? Yeah, Lex is cool. We're solving a case together. A tough case with lots of intrigue. You got a big case? What are you doing here? Not that you're not welcome. I'm always happy to spend the morning with you, Donald. The cold observer says that sometimes the thoughts waiting for him at the bottom of a glass make the most sense. Plus, the ambience. I knew you liked my house. Yeah, it's perfect. Real private investigator offices are always run down. Run down? The living room has a signature stench. You basically have to know the secret code to get the toilets to flush. And you let me leave my stuff out for as long as I want. It's a total joint! 
Oh, well, I, uh... Oh, and it's cool how if you drop a ball in the kitchen, it always rolls to the same corner. The foundation has been slipping. I guess the swamp wants to take the joint, too. The swamp wants to take the joint to... to where? Or wait, do you mean also? Who else wants to take the joint? Some developers want to build a strip mall, but don't worry about it, boss. It's adult stuff. Donald August P.I. is an adult! You're right. You can handle it. Okay. The HOA has to vote on it, but since this is a vacation home for most of my neighbors, the majority might vote to sell if the money's right. I don't know. I can live anywhere. So long as I'm close to you and your mother. I'm not worried about me. I'm worried about you. Next door to an Applebee's is no place for a kid to grow up. Because of the cheese dip. Queso should have flavor, Donald! I may be retired, but I'm still a man. There's no culture at Applebee's. Promise me you'll never settle like that! I promise I'll never settle for flavorless food. Good. Now, the hot dogs are done boiling, so I'll go get the sauces out. Put your detective things away so they don't get dirty while we eat. Now, the real reason I spent the morning at Uncle Rowan's house. Yesterday, I left a suspect here under the couch. Solitary always makes him talk. Enough time spent alone with your thoughts will crack even the toughest nut. Or in this case, seed. Rowan's living room was the darkest place I knew. He barely ever remembers to open the blinds and let the sun in during the day. I thought under the couch would be the best, worst place for a seed to get all of its glowing in the dark out of its system. So just now, I made sure to make an extra big mess in the kitchen, pretending to help clean. How was I supposed to know you can't use the leftover hot dog water the same as faucet water? The smell alone should keep the bartender occupied in the kitchen for long enough to conduct my own interrogation. Okay, I push the couch in three, two, one. Oh, oh, oh my god, okay, okay, okay. Uh, The suspect has taken root? It broke through the tile floor and pushed apart the concrete to get into the ground below the house. It has not yet budded, but it is green in color, and... Ow! Hostile in nature! At least when touched. That was so spiky. Donald! How'd you get the hot sauce on the toaster? I was spicing things up? (laughs) This was it. This was the break in the case that I needed even if I wasn't fully sure of what the break means. But, oh boy, this definitely means something. I had it all in myself, in my uncle's living room. This case was really heating up, much like the now spicier toaster. And I couldn't let anyone, not Uncle Rowan, not the police, not the cold observer himself, steal it away from me. But wait, if this is what a seed was capable of in the dark, then what horrors could a seed with all the resources it needed be capable of Evie dropped a seed in the library, right in the sun. Oh, the case was on! The worst part is, once I got that hot sauce off, I realized the spot I just cleaned is actually a different color than the rest of it. Mom says cleaning is therapeutic. I'll do my therapy after you leave. Just one more thing in here and I'll come and spend some time with you. Uh Uh-oh. I had to act fast if I wanted to keep the adults from finding my clue under the couch. Uh, I'll... Push the couch back, and put the perp back in solitary. No rush, Uncle Rowan! It's kind of dark in here, isn't it? Always mean to open up the blinds. Wait, uh, maybe it's safer in the dark. You don't have to say that for my sake, Donald. I know it's brighter and happier in here with the blinds open. Okay, boss. What do you want to know? Um, do you always sit on that couch? Hey, my exercise routine is my business, but I'll have you know I golf with the boys from the dock at least once a week. Or at least I did until Richard tripped on the back nine a few weeks ago. Your friend got hurt playing golf? It wasn't his fault. 
Normally, courses are green, rolling, flat sky, same kind of grass all the way throughout. No little critters to jump out at you. It takes a lot of manpower to fight back the flora and the fauna of the Everglades on the west side of Wellington. That's what you're really paying for with the club membership. But they missed a palm tree root. What happened to Richard? He tripped on a palm tree root. He messed up his hip something bad. Young for hip trouble, you know. Can't walk for six weeks or anything. Oh, he's living like a king, Donald. His wife and kids are taking care of him, bringing him sparkling water and burgers. There's some perks to living with family. So did you hunt down the perp? What perp? The palm tree root. It's just a tree. It hurt your friend. Sometimes things can hurt you without meaning to. They're just not even thinking about you. You're not on their radar. Sorry, I didn't mean to ring the doorbell twice. The button got stuck. Yeah, I've been meaning to fix that. It's a good thing my assistant's on time today. I thought you said she was a big rule follower. She's... she's always on time. Lex, it's as tall as me now. I... saw. We have to hurry, or else this case is going to get big enough for the both of us. Donnie, did you ask your uncle if maybe there was a different explanation? Like, maybe his property manager just replaced the baby saw palm from yesterday with another, larger, otherwise identical saw palm? Uncle Rowan doesn't have a property manager. It would interfere with his place being a rundown joint. Rundown joint? Whoa, Donnie. I know the plant thing is exciting and all, but some of us have to think about how our words might make other people feel. What are you talking about? Eh, it's no wonder I can't figure you out. The cold observer says dames are the only mystery he can't solve. Now come on, unlock the car. We're running out of time. And batteries. Excuse me, Miss Alexa? Donald forgot his book and uh, this recorder. Oh, thanks. He's always leaving stuff. Mr. Rowan? Um, do you call women dames? Oh. Oh. Oh, no. Is Donald still doing that? His mother said she talked to him about it. Yes, he is still doing it. Well, he didn't get it from me. I never say that stuff. When I first started working in Manhattan at the time? Okay, maybe. But not for years. Never around Donnie. It's from his show, The Cold Observer. Oh, I know about the show. It's too old for him. The dames thing? Yeah, it's like from the 50s. No, not the dame thing. The show. He's a kid. His mother thinks so, too. He is a kid. Why doesn't his mom just stop him from watching the show if it's too inappropriate for him? She couldn't stop him from watching it if she wanted to. It was his father's favorite. They always watched it together. Huh. Donald's father invented the whole detective game. Donald was the assistant, and they'd go all around, up and down sidewalks, narrating what they were doing. My sister loved watching them do it. Oh, Donnie never talks about Donnie's getting old for games. I know, it's harmless. Can't blame the boy wanting there to be more magic and mystery in the world than there is, right? He, uh, he might be right about the magic. What's important is Donald never hurts anybody in his game. Uh, not physically, no. When I was his age, my friends and I were wrestling, trying to see if the Vulcan nerve pinch could really make people pass out. Donald makes up mysteries that he can solve. He's a good kid. Huh. Yeah, maybe he is a good kid. Do you think fantasy adventure stories are just for kids? Excuse me? What? Nothing. Lex! We have a dangerous suspect who might have broken out of custody. It's the library. We have to return the book. You better sit in that car seat. Did you hear that, Donnie? Your uncle says you have to sit in the car seat. Betrayed! By my own flesh and blood! Ugh! Thanks for listening to the third episode of Donald August versus the Land of Flowers. As you've heard, a few friends and I made this whole show ourselves. It was written by me, Emily Donovan, and my MFA in creative writing classmate, Ben Kearns. It was voiced by my Dungeons and Dragon DM, Chicago voice actor, Dave Cutler, and by his sister, Chicago musical improv actress, Katie Cutler. Music is by Ben's friend, MFA in electronic music and recording media, Dylan Burchett. If you want to support the show, you can donate to our PayPal. That's paypal.me slash donaldaugustpod. You can also support the show by leaving us a five-star rating on iTunes or anywhere else where you leave impossibly high ratings for free content desperate for external validation. Episode 4 comes out on Tuesday, that's August 18th, and Episode 5, the finale, will come out on the 25th. If you miss us until then, you can find us on your social media of choice, so long as your social media of choice is Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, at Donald August Pod. 
See you on Tuesday.